It's time for another one-off rebuild. Today, we're going to be trying to rebuild bottom of the Premier League table, Southampton. That's right. Today, we're going to be rebuilding Southampton in FM23. Five seasons we're going to do here as Southampton manager to see just how high we can take them and hopefully stop them getting relegated at the same time. They're a club who do have trophies in their past, an FA Cup in the 70s and also runners up in the Premier League back in 1984. But recently, it's not been very good. It was about a decade or so ago when they made it back into the Premier League where they've been and had a few very good seasons when they had the likes of Ricky Lambert, Adam Lallana, amongst a bunch of other Premier League court heroes that they had. But we're going to try and take them right to those positions yet again. Hopefully get some European football, but we've got a lot of work to do. Before we start taking a look around the club I'd like to ask you guys if you do enjoy this video to smash the like button for us because it will really help in pushing it out to as many eyes as possible I'll massively appreciate it and also if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel then click that button as we push for 15,000 subscribers we post regular football manager content on here including long-term series and also these one-off rebuilds so make sure you hit that button and comment down below who you'd like to see next in these rebuild videos but yes here is our side Southampton first of all financial we are in a decent place 27 million in the overall balance 20 million in the transfer budget which is good to see and not a crazy amount of debt at the club either which is a nice change from some of the rebuilds that we've done recently their facilities are in a very good place all of them are either at a good or very good level which is a great base for us to build up from we've got a 30,000 capacity stadium fairly recently built as well in the early 2000s so we'll take that not too much in terms of young talents coming out of our development center but Gavin Bazuna will certainly be part of our senior side other than that not too much to take note of just yet our staff situation isn't great we do need a lot of improvement there and we'll make sure we get on that but in terms of our squad it's a very nice squad in terms of the age of it. There's a lot of good young talent in there that we can build around. The likes of Bazunu, Bella Kotchap, Romeo Lavia this season has been great as well. Even Salisu at centre-back is still only 23. Salisu is one of our star players alongside James Ward-Prowse, Kyle Walker-Peters amongst a few of us. But we do have a few older heads in the squad and some players that may be aren't quite at the level we'd want to be if we want to push up the table. It's certainly a relegation level squad, I would say. So we need to do a lot of work to give us time for those young players to develop. But right now we need immediate solutions. The club are looking for us to play high tempo pressing football and sign young players basically under the age of 23, 19 and preferably nobody over the age of 28 and they're also looking to sign players to sell for a profit so we need to focus on bringing in young talent to help this already very young side and they want a mid-table finish in the first season. Now you might say I have the editor here, I use this purely to become unsackable in the game so even if the first season goes terribly we can still build off of it. So just to let you know even if we get relegated I'll still be manager so we can do this really build but let's get on with our first set of transfers. We'll start with the sales firstly we've let Theo Walcott go to Hamburg for £400,000. I wanted to give Bazunu the chance in goal so we've let Alex McCarthy leave to Hoffenheim for 2.7 mil. Elianusi is a good player but I felt like we had better options in the team and he's 27 at this point. I thought it would be a good time to move him on and make some money so we've sold him to the Serie A to Empoli for 3.8 million. But our biggest sale was Shea Adams who we've moved to Brighton for 25 4 million pounds they paid a very nice fee for him he is a good striker but maybe not the person we want to lead the line long term at least preferably that's not what I'm after in terms of what I want to do with this Southampton side also to note as well I'm doing a Southampton rebuild here even though they've just gone on and beat my Chelsea side 1-0 in real life which was very disappointing but you know what we'll keep going and I'll rebuild Southampton maybe we need to do a Chelsea rebuild soon and it was in the attack where I felt like we needed the most improvement our defense was decent so was our midfield but up front and on the wings not very good but we have signed a few players to help remedy that firstly with the Che Adams money and a little bit extra we have bought in João Pedro from Watford in the championship he's cost us just under 30 million but he's a very talented player with a lot of potential still very young as well and someone with hopefully a lot of resale value should we get to that point but either way I'm hoping he can contribute to our side a player that I signed a few years ago in FM and absolutely loved and he came up in the scout report here and I thought we should definitely go for him it's 
it's Gambian inside forward slash striker Musa Barrow, who joins us from Bologna out in Syria, where he joined from Atalanta only very recently. He played a season or so there and has now joined us for £14 million, a very talented player with a lot of potential to still get better at the age of 23, and hopefully a very nice addition to our side, someone that can contribute with goals cutting in from that left flank. And finally, we have bought young Spanish 19-year-old striker John Curicaburu from Real Sociedad. Now, this is someone who has a lot of potential. The scouts are raving about him as our best striking option that we could buy. Whether he'll come in and do the job just yet, whether he'll flop, who knows, but he's certainly someone that could grow as our club hopefully pushes up to the top of the league. But with that done, that is our transfers for this year. In terms of a tactic, I'm going to start with a 4 2 3 1. Whether we'll stick to this, I'm not sure. And if we have a look at our best 11 without any restrictions, it's not looking too great. Caballero in goal, who for this season will be Bazunu. Carl Walker Peters, Bednarak, who is on loan. Salisu, Perot, Ward Prowse, Diallo, Armstrong, Aribo, another Armstrong, and Musa Barrow. It's not the best team. Definitely relegation quality in the Premier League. And we need to do a lot of work. So let's see how we get on in season one. And we have got very, very lucky. I've holidayed ahead. We've landed towards the end of May and I'll scroll down for you and you can see at which point Southampton appears. Is it 16th? No, it's 17th. Only just avoiding relegation by two points. Our goal difference was worse than that of Leicester. Fulham also on 31 points and Forest only three points away at the bottom of the league. A really poor year from us. We very nearly went down, but we managed to survive. I imagine if we didn't have become unsackable on from the editor, we would definitely have got sacked. But now we can build from this position. Cup runs were awful. Wickham and Birmingham knocking us out. It's really not good at all. And if we actually have a look at our schedule, you'll see that we lost so many games in a row. We were awful. And it was only in the last couple of games of the season where we saved ourselves. Firstly, beating Bournemouth away after the Lerma got sent off. We just managed to scrape past a 10-man side. And then we needed to beat Man City on the final game of the season. And Joe Aribo and João Pedro managed to score two. Haaland could only score one and we managed to make it out alive. Tino Livermento back from injury. I didn't cover him earlier, but he is someone that I'm really looking to build around at the club. A brilliant right back option with a lot of potential. Hopefully Chelsea don't action that buyback clause. Ward Prowse was our best player of the season as expected, but even he only had a seven average match rating, which is really not a peak score for everyone to compare themselves to. Everyone else was just even worse. João Pedro was a bright spark this year though, scoring 16 goals in the league and whilst he wasn't good in terms of his general play, them goals certainly helped keep us up and now we're going to have to move on. In season two, we're going to have to do some transfer business to change the fortunes around of the club and hopefully get these young players ticking with some good quality talent in there as well so that we can all grow together and push this club forward. So let's see how we can do. Haven't been given my transfer budget yet, but hopefully it'll be more than 3.59 mil. I think I've completed my season two transfers now, so let me run you through them. We have sold Musa Gnepo, a left-sided option who was crowded out by Pedro and Barrow this year. He's gone to Sheffield United for about 7 million, 7.5. There you go. Didn't play much last season. When he did, wasn't great. So let's move him on for some cash. Adam Armstrong, not a bad option, but not someone that I'm really looking to build around. Southampton did splash the cash on him from Blackburn, but we've decided to let him go. He's not in my plans. He's gone to West Ham for 8.5 million, where I'm sure he'll be good but I wanted better. 24 year old Nathan Teller also leaves us. I think we got a pretty good deal on him. He's gone for 5.25 million pounds to sell to Vigo. He was on loan at Burnley last year. He's a good player don't get me wrong but didn't really fit into my tactic. I've got an inverted winger on this side. He is a winger on the right hand side and it just didn't seem like it was a perfect match so we've allowed him to move. We've done the same with Bednarak. He came back off loan from Aston Villa where he was okay and we've just sold him on for 6 mil. We're moving on. We're cutting ties with a lot of these players we're trying to be ruthless with our transfer business to really take our club forward. But Bednarak, the Polish international, is gone. And finally, our other major sale was Jack Stevens. He's gone to Watford for 4 million. I actually think we've done a pretty good bit of business there. He was on loan at Bournemouth last season, was fine but not great. Now he came back to our team and at centre-back, we had better options. So he is out the team and that gave us some cash to spend. Our first incoming was 
was an improvement on the right hand side of the attack this time. I wanted an inverted winger to help us out and we have gone for Lil Abada. He's a 21 year old Israeli who plays for Celtic in real life but we've signed him after a very good season from them. It is a lot of money but he has a lot of talent and already his transfer valuation is far higher than what we paid for him and I'll be hoping he can run the show on that right hand side. A Nigerian striker from FC Lorient, Terem Mofi, is our new backup striker this year, maybe even starting striker. He was very good in Ligue 1 last season, scoring 11 in 33 with a great average match rating. We've paid 12 million pounds for the guy and I'm hoping he can lead the line when called upon. Very physically quick, a great presser of the football as well. He could really fit into this high tempo pressing football that we're after from our side. We needed a backup goalkeeper to replace Alex McCarthy and to deputise to Bazunu, so we've got Nathan Baxter on a free deal from Chelsea and arguably he could actually compete with Bazunu in the net. And our only other sign-in was Alex Scott. We're trying to be responsible and give these young players time to grow, but we've now added to our young ranks by signing him from Bristol City in the Championship where he was decent last year, but the scouts knew he had a lot of potential. I'm aware of it too from playing FM, but for 15 million, I think we've got a very good midfield option who's very versatile and hopefully can grow with the club as we're trying to do with all of these players. So let's check out our best 11 now. And it is starting to take shape. It's Bazunu in goal with Romenso at right back, two young players, Coletta Saar and Salisu with Kyle Walker-Peters, Diallo, Lavia, another good young talent, Ward-Prowse, and then a strike force made up of our signings, Abada, Barrow and Pedro with some good players on the bench as well. We'll be hoping we can take this club to better than 17th place this season. I'm crossing my fingers. Let's see how we do in season two. And it's a much better year from us this time round. We finished in 10th place, the kind of place we really should be with this Southampton team on 56 points, which is actually one more than Chelsea and one less than Manchester United, but still way off any of those people in European competitions. Although saying that West Ham Tottenham weren't super far ahead, but still a couple of wins in it. Cups again weren't very good at all. Fifth round of the FA and second round against Plymouth in the Carabao. Not too good, especially in the Carabao, but we'll try and move on from that. In terms of our best players this year, Leo Labada was one of them. So it's great to see that transfers worked out. So Lisu, Ward-Prowse, Lianco, Diallo are some of the others that have done well. Bazunu, also doing pretty good in the net and it's another 15 goals this season from João Pedro who now has interest from Leeds so we'll see how that turns out Musa Barrow wanted by Leeds also um, it looks like Leeds are after all of our players we'll have to see what goes on here and we do have some players asking to leave too so we're going to have to think about that check out the contract situation and move on from there so let's do our third season of business and hopefully we can start to push into those European spots I've started off with a pretty major sale actually we have let Joe Aribo former Rangers player leave he has gone to Leeds United we've doubled our money for 14 and a half mil didn't play as much last season and I'll show you why in a second but he has now moved on and we'll take that cash and reinvest it. Roman Perot decided he wanted to leave. His contract was starting to run out, so we've let him go. He's gone to Fenerbahce after not performing much for us at all recently. So hopefully he'll do fine there, but we're moving on from him. And the other major sale was someone that was in our best 11 last season in terms of quality of player. It's Duje Kalatasar, a Croatian international centre-back who Southampton have signed in real life this year for 12 million. We've moved him on for pretty much the fee we paid for him. He was playing a lot and does have quality, but just wasn't playing well. So we've cut ties and we've got new players in. The first one being our new left back, who I feel like fits the Southampton mould perfectly. It's Miguel Gutierrez, a very attacking left-sided player who I'm hoping will be able to bomb up that wing and put some great crosses in. He's got a lot of potential too. We've signed him for 18.75 from Girona, former Real Madrid player. He's played okay for his side in La Liga, but we'll be hoping he can kick on this year. And he looks like he has the ability to do so. Kaleta Sar needed replacing at centre-back. So we've gone for Serbian international Strahinja Pavlovic who plays for RB Salzburg. We signed him for 14 million after a couple of good seasons for them. A very nice physical option, left-footed as well. Hopefully he can partner up with either Salisu or Bella Kotchap at the back. And in my opinion, our best signing and our major signing this summer was Manu Kone from Borussia Mönchengladbach. He cost us 28 million, a player with a lot of potential, a French under 21 international, now 23. He's going to be joining our side, has great attributes all around and can hopefully start to fill in as Ward Prowse gets older and gets tired Manu Kone can hopefully take his place but so far the team is shaping up nicely and the reason that I mentioned that we got rid of Joe Aribo is because we've moved 
to a 4-3-3. And I actually forgot to show you that last year, but I just decided we didn't have enough good number 10s. We had better midfield players. So let's change the tactic around. And we did exactly that. And now if we see our best 11, it is Bazunu, Walker-Peters, Salisu, Pavlovic, Gutierrez, Lavia, Kone, Ward-Prowse, Abada, Barrow, and Pedro. For me, this side is way stronger than Southampton's current side in real life. And we'll be hoping this team can kick on and really push for those European places. So let's see how we do in season three. And the answer is phenomenally well, because not only have we finished sixth in the league, which is great, above the likes of Chelsea, Leeds and Tottenham. We were way off the top five, to be honest, but at least we were in sixth. But we actually won a competition. For the first time in a long time, Southampton get to go home with a trophy. It's the Carabao Cup and it's John Carica Baru who is really starting to find his feet here with a 7.78 rating in the cup and six goals and 14 goals in the league season. We've came out with a goal difference of eight. We've won more than we lost and it was a much better year for us this time round. Romeo Lavia is becoming the player we knew he could. He's now becoming a dominant force in our team and you can see just how well he is developing the young Belgian. We've been asking the assistant manager to play him as often as possible and it seems to be working for him. Mofi scored quite a lot of goals off the bench. Karika Baru started 20 times and scored 20 goals in all comps, which is awesome. And Pedro still keeps scoring goals for us. Manu Kone also doing very well. And this young team is coming on really nicely now. Just to fill you in on other situations at the club, the staff situation is starting to get a lot better and it's starting to become one of the best in the league. So we're sorting out the backroom stuff and then also facilities wise, we've upgraded the junior coaching and the youth recruitment as well as the facilities to keep them up to date. And the club is really starting to progress nicely. We're doing a great job and hopefully we can keep pushing from here. Now that we're in European competition, we've been given 53 million pounds to spend. So let's hope we can spend it well. And just so as you can see there, Bianco is leaving on a free to Palmerias. So say goodbye to him. And it's time for our fourth season of transfers, our penultimate season. Can we really start pushing? We've won one trophy already. We're in the Europa League. Can we push for a Champions League spot? Okay, so in season four's transfers, we decided to let Terra Mofi go, which might have been a bit harsh, but he had interest in him. He was slightly unhappy because as you can see, he played four times as a starter last year. Everything else was off the bench. And whilst he did do well, he's going off to Shakhtar now where he'll be a key player for them, I'm sure. And hopefully he does great there. But we did bring in some cash for him and were able to spend it. But not before also selling young striker Sekumara. He's gone to Greek side Aris for 7 million. Pretty good business considering he never really played for us. He did when he first signed, but then I just wasn't very happy with him. I didn't think he was good enough quality and we let him go. We're trying to make the best team possible here and we can't have these kind of players floating around the club. And it was now time to build some quality depth into the team who can compete for places. And our first player that we bought in was a free agent at the time, USA International, 26 years of age, Weston McKinney, who was doing pretty well for Juve when he was playing, 17 appearances, seven average match rating. But then over time, he's got less and less game time. He's left on a free and we've bought him in as a nice depth option. And it's the same case for Mickey van der Ven. We needed someone to replace Lianco at the back. So we've gone for this young Dutch under 21 international, decent ability. He'll be happy to be fourth choice, won't kick up a fuss. And sometimes that's all you need. So he's joined us from Wolfsburg. But we did sell two strikers this summer. So I needed someone to come in and be that goal scorer that gets us all the goals. Karika Buru was trying, but even his best efforts weren't returning us that many goals. So we've gone for a striker in the prime of his career, 29 year old, 52 capped international Portuguese striker, Andre Silva, who joins us from Leipzig after three good years out there. Three very high average match ratings suggest to me that he could be very good for us in the right tactic. A brilliant finisher who's also a physical presence as well. We'll be hoping he can make the difference for us this year. And that was it on the transfer front. So our best team is now Bazunu, Walker-Peters, Salusu, Pavlovic, Gutierrez, Lavia, Kone, Warprouse, Abada, Barrow. And the only new entry is Silva up front with a very nice bench full of great young talent that we can keep developing. Really, I feel like we're due a huge sale at some time soon. I've managed to keep hold of Lavia despite a lot of interest. There've been rumors of 80 million pound bids for him. For to save I've been having conversations with these players and saying to them look if this bid comes in we'll accept it and then I make the bid that I'm asking for quite a high bid in the hopes it doesn't happen and so far we've got pretty lucky but this side is looking great let's see how this team can get on in the Europa League and also in the Prem and this is just a crazy result we didn't actually make 
top six in the league this year. We got more points, but didn't manage to get there. We lost out to Tottenham and Wolves just ahead of us. But crazily, I don't know how, this team has managed to get knocked out of the FA Cup by Portsmouth, but go on to win the Europa League 3-0 against Tottenham in the final. It's been a brilliant performance from us. 22 goals from Andre Silva in the Europa League is an incredible number, and he has been scoring for fun this season. 31 goals in 37 appearances. Incredible numbers from him, and the team is really starting to gel together and come together here. Barrow, Lavia, and Leah Labada got us those goals in the final. It was a great team performance by the looks of it and everybody performed well so I'm really happy to see that we are winning trophies now that's a Carabao Cup and a European trophy I never would have expected we'd go that far and now in our final season we're in the UCL but let's be realistic I don't think we're going to win it I mean it'd be great if we did but so far this rebuild is already gone way better than some of the last ones I've done where we've only just scraped a result in the final season. Season three, Carabao Cup, Europa League, that's a success. Season four, Champions League and Europa League, that is even better. Season five, let's just enjoy the fruits of our labour, hopefully secure another top six finish and who knows how far we'll go in the UCL. If we can make it to the knockouts, I'll be more than happy. So let's see how we do in our fifth and final season in this Southampton rebuild. If you are still watching at this point, let me know in the comments down below by typing the Arlo and also smash the like button for me to show your support. It took a while to make this one, so thank you to anyone who does. But here we are with our very limited transfers that we did in our fifth and final season. I've let Ibrahima Diallo move. He's actually gone to Juventus for £19 million, a good solid backup option for us. His game time started to dwindle out, so I thought we'll let him move on and we got a nice bit of cash for him. And it was pretty much a straight up swap. I replaced him with a player that I presume to be better and someone that's also slightly younger. His name is Christian Aslani. He joins us from Empoli for £18.5 million. To do so well at a club like that, consistently high average match ratings, goes to show his quality. He was ready for the next step, the Albanian, and he is joining us. A great passer for football, and that is now our team complete for this coming season. So let's see our best 11 and see just how well we've rebuilt this side. So it's Bazuno in goal, Livramento, who at this point is becoming a great right back, Silisu, Pavlovic, Gutierrez with Lavia at the base of the midfield. He's looking great now. He really has developed and he's still apparently got some room left to grow, according to our coaches. Manu Kone, James Ward-Prowse still going, Abada, Barrow and Andre Silva. It's a phenomenal team that we've assembled and hopefully this side can push on in our fifth and final season. Before we do that though, just a final look around. Club facilities are very nice. The capacity is still about the same and James Ward-Prowse is trying to slowly make his way into being a club legend and not just a club icon. Staff situation is also one of the best in the league now. We're really starting to develop that and financially we've got plenty of money in the bank balance and we've pretty much cleared any debt that there ever was. So we're doing great financially. That Champions League place has really helped us but let's see how far we can go in the competition in our fifth and final season, simulating time, let's see how we do. And I feel like this season we might have been spread pretty thin across a bunch of different competitions, so I'm not going to be too mad. But we've ended up finishing in ninth place in the league, still about the same amount of points, but it seems like this year everyone else was better. Good to see Newcastle win in the league, a change up there. But the interesting thing is we were runners up in the Super Cup, of course, we ended up losing to Real Madrid 2-0, but we actually made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, where it took Manchester City two beaters. So I think we've done well there. We actually made it past the knockout round, knocking out RB Leipzig, but it was just a bit too much to face off against City, who only knocked us out by a goal, mind you, but they did in fact knock us out. Overall, I'm not too bothered about this last season because the rebuild as a whole went well. Everything is going well at the club. The club are also very happy with us in terms of our performance. We're working within all the budgets, spending money, and we have a nice rating too. They still only think we're actually good enough for a top half finish, so we're doing very well to outperform that and supposedly we are now the eighth best team in the league in terms of our squad and our best two players are Lavia and Leo Labada and I can certainly get behind that but despite a slightly underwhelming last season it's been a fantastic rebuild I think we've done a great job on Southampton I know they're currently still looking for a manager so I might be a great option. Ring me up. I'll do the job for you. I'll get Ward Prowse banging in free kicks for fun and Lavia becoming one of the world's best midfielders. If you have enjoyed this rebuild, smash the like button for me and subscribe for more. But most of all, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.